Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you more and more. With all of my heart and all of my soul. All of my mind, all of my strength, with all of my heart, and all of my soul, all of my mind, and all of my strength, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Good day, everyone. Today we have Jim Muse, who will be sharing his uh, story of encounter with the Lord. Thank you, Marie Chantel. Um, as uh, Marie said, my name is Jim Muse. Um, I'm uh, 64 years old. I've been married for 38 years. I have three children and seven grandchildren, six here and one in heaven. And uh, I grew up in Halifax, Nova Scotia. So that makes me a Haligonian. And I was a bit of a Gonian when I was younger because I was a bit of a rebel rouser. But um, the, um, my, I grew up in a very, very strong Catholic family. Always had this rebellious spirit. And uh, in high school, um, I was in, I finished grade 10 and I, and I had dropped out of grade 11. And I had gone down to Bridgewater, Nova Scotia with my girlfriend. We were at her uncle's pool hall and I drank half a quart of rum and on the way back, the, the, my dad's Volkswagen Beetle, um, I had three people in the back and my girlfriend next to my side. And it was wintertime and I hit a patch of ice. And I felt that I was going to go into the river. There was a river. So I overcompensated, pulled it back. And then I went over the snowbank, took out a light and power pole, and it landed on the roof, rolling, uh, spinning in the middle of the road. Uh, I was 17 years old and I was charged with drinking and driving. I had dropped out of high school. I was basically a loser. It was fortunately for, fortunate for myself, my dad that weekend was making his Casillo weekend. And, and he, when he came home, all he was concerned with was no one was hurt. And I said, what did you do with my father? Anyways, he was full of love and he supported me through a very, very difficult time. And I got myself back into school and, um, and then basically uh, I started university in Halifax and then moved to Ottawa where I met my wife um, in, in the last year of university. She was in nursing, I'm in business. And um, anyway, so we got married in 1984. In 1985, I made my Curseal weekend. My dad sponsored me to make it. And uh, I was on this weekend with 50 men and on Friday night, they have what they call a reconciliation service. And it's like the lights were all dim in the room at the Notre Dame de Providence. And um, I just felt myself t crying or tearing up in this darkened room. So I said, I got to get out of here. I pretended that I was just going to go to the washroom. And I went downstairs and there was like a, an adoration chapel. Um, where as Catholics, we believe that the, 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 the presence of Jesus Christ is is body, soul, blood, and, and, and divinity in that. I had no idea at the time. So I said, I'll just hide out in here. And then um, I just had this sense from the Lord of all my sinfulness, all the problems that caused my parents. And I just kind of fell on my face before the Lord. And then I felt him lift that off me. It was a very, very powerful experience. I, I don't even know if I went to reconciliation that night, but the bottom line was I, uh, it was a massive conversion for me. And that was October, 1985. Going through my life, um, every time I've gotten away from my prayer time, regular prayer time, or trying to do things on my own, trying to be driving the bus, I get myself in trouble. And so the latest is that seven months ago, I almost lost my marriage because of alcohol. And I've now um, almost eight months without having a drink. And, you know, good news is I've lost a lot of weight. 
I feel better. My brain's sharper. And, um, and um, so I, I, just, I just feel night and day. Um, basically, my wife said to me, okay, you're an alcoholic. So then I said, okay, I'm going to quit drinking for a year. And then she said, <clears throat> um, no, I want you to go to AA. She wanted me to go to AA. I'm not going to freaking AA, right? Because I'm stubborn. I'm Irish. Scottish. And um, so then finally, she said, uh, she, uh, so I went to see a friend of mine that was, that was in the program. And he gave me his, uh, the big book, they call it. And then he said, I don't think you're an alcoholic. But he gave me his big book, so I started reading it. And she, she said, no, that's not enough. I want you to go to someone else. So I went to another guy. Mm. And then uh, he, so then I went to an AA meeting. I was so speechless. I didn't connect with anybody there on any level whatsoever, mm. right? But they're so honest. The people have done the hard work. They've searched inside themselves, and it was so intimidating. I thought I was an honest person. I thought I had a lot of integrity. These people had, had ripped their souls apart. And so it was, uh, I, I couldn't speak for five meetings, right? And I've done, I've looked inside and dealt the, with the hard stuff that I had to deal with, right? My blind spots. You know, that, you think give God permission is a dangerous prayer. How about, Lord, show me my blind spots? That's even more dangerous, right? And you put four or five things clearly in my heart. And still working through all that, what that means for character changes. Right now, I just, my prayer time every day is non-negotiable. I want to spend time with God and Jesus in prayer. And I am the tax to collector in the temple, or I'm the weeping woman at the foot of Jesus, or if I really want to be hard on myself, I use Ecclesiastes. Vanity of vanity, everything's vanity. So I start with a position of humility. Um, I love people. I like reaching out to people. I love people. I have a heart for people that are, that are lost, that are weak. And, um, <clears throat> and I just, I, I just want to be there for everybody. I just love people. I'm trying to be like a, like a, I was a good father, but I'm trying to work on being a great father and being a great grandfather. I would say that it's never too late. It's never too late to give your life to the Lord. It's never too late to make changes. And yeah, God, if God can rescue a miserable sinner like me, then he can rescue anybody. So Lord, you know, anyone that maybe you listen to this video today, Lord, we just, you know, we, you don't make junk. You, you, you love us where we are. You love us too much to, to let us stay where we are. We are. You want us to live life fully, and, and, and our only fullness of life is in you and through you. And Lord, you know, if you've never done this before, I would invite you to give the Lord permission in your life. Lord, you're in charge, and I'm not driving the bus. You are. And Lord, I thank you for what you've done for me, notwithstanding that my sins are what puts you on the cross. Amen. So, Lord Jesus, we just really thank you for uh, Jim's um, honesty and openness in sharing his, uh, his story and how uh, the Lord has, uh, has been moving in his heart right now. And I just uh, pray a blessing of peace within his heart, mind, and soul. I pray a blessing on his marriage as a good husband. I pray um, a blessing of uh, love with his children, grandchildren, all the family. And I just pray that the Holy Spirit comes um, deeper and um, to show him the areas where um, the Lord has been so faithful and he keeps his promises all the time for him to continue on that Jesus, I pray. Amen. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Jesus,
Jesus, I love you. 